Here we go. Mine. I want Arion, also known as AK47. And today we're going to talk about, maybe again, some of you guys may have seen this before at other conferences, but we're going to talk about the game jam again. So, first off, this is the agenda, but okay. But let's just skip to this one, because uh, if you're seeing this, well, very beautiful logo, which is called, which is SpaceFed, and SpaceFed is our um, project, which we started in November 2011, along with uh, Wilco and with uh, Laser. Well. And um, SpaceFed is our uh, federated uh, authentication platform. So space and fat and well, there's a pun in there. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, what we're, uh, what our project is offering right now is uh, SpaceNet, but we're uh, looking into other uh, projects like uh, Space uh, SAML and Space Connect. Maybe if uh, somebody is interested in those two projects, uh, Dr. Wilco, he is uh, in the planning phase for this uh, two projects. Um, well, we're on. Uh, Open community initiative uh, sounds a bit marketing-ish, but uh, well, if you're if you're interested in this project, you can just contact us, and we've got a, still plenty of stuff to do. So, what it, what is SpaceNet? Um, it's a, a federated application for secure rolling <coughs> of well, uh, a wireless network across hackerspaces and uh, events. So um, when you're uh, at a hackerspace or at an event, and uh, your hackerspace or community or whatever is connected to this uh, SpaceNet network, you can use your credentials, which you have at your home hackerspace, to uh, connect to the network in a well, somewhat secure way. Um, our project is uh, comparable to uh, to Adirom. Um, so Adirom is a similar project which is uh, rolled out over universities and uh, uh, colleges. And uh, well, it's uh, internationally seen pretty widely deployed. So uh, what they do at Adirom is then when when you have an account at your home uh, university and you're a guest. At another university, you can just use your credentials from your home university to connect to the network. So, uh, yeah, SpaceNet is about uh, configuring your settings once on your device and then just uh, use that to uh, connect to the network at a lot of places. So, you configure it once and you use it, well, everywhere, but <laughs> not everywhere right now. But getting there. Um, uh, SpaceNet is based on the WPA2 encryption uh, enterprise with uh, 802.1x.1x uh, with uh, Radius proxying. With the broken MS chip? What? <laughs> yeah. With MS chip, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, SpaceNet is also uh, about creating awareness about network security, what, what vulnerabilities are there, and how can you uh, mitigate them if you're <coughs> running your network, and uh, what uh, things should you look after uh, if you're a client that which is using this network. So, um, in the previous slide I'm also already talking about WPA2, uh, .1x, and RADIUS. Um, so the reason we're using WPA2 is because, uh, well, WAP and WPA version 1, they have too much, the, the, the encryption is too weak, so please don't bother with those standards. Um, but WPA2 has a um, very strong uh, cipher, which is the CCMP, which is an uh, AES-based encryption. 
Um, if you would be running a, a public Wi-Fi network, uh, WPA2, PSK, pre-shared key would not really cut it because you're using a static key. So when you uh, would sniff the association and you know the key, then you can get to the session key and you can still decrypt all the, all the network. So PSK, PSK it does not cut it for public networks. Um, so we're using WPA2 Enterprise, and this is excellent because it has dynamic keys for each session. Um, this is all done in the in uh, 802.1x, which is uh, initially invented for the wired uh, network access control, but then uh, also extended to uh, for using the Wi-Fi network access control. This uh, 802.1x binds the extensible authentication protocol E. Which is commonly used uh, in combination with a uh, radio server. And well, well, most people know Radius, which is uh, which was initially de developed for uh, for dial-in authentication and authorization and accounting, of course. Um, in Spain, that we're only using authentication and authorization. Accounting is not something we're actually doing, but with accounting you can uh, collect data from how long a user will be aligned, how day-to-day uh, -day transfer, that kind of stuff. We're not really into that, we're only uh, doing the authentication and authorization. So, um, why is it useful? Uh, like I said before, you configure it once and use it everywhere. Works on most clients. Um, Linux and OS X and the Windows, they have proper support for it. Most devices like Android and uh, iPhone, they have also excellent support for it. So, why not go for that? Um, it's secure because it uses WPA2 with dynamic keys. Um, works at every connected space or event. So, um, we're running this um, this event, we're running it. Uh, we're, we have robots, uh, most of the active spaces in the Netherlands, we have Luxembourg, we have a couple of them in, in Germany, and uh, well, maybe at your uh, space next week. Um, yeah, SpaceNet is a way of, uh, of giving well, uh, guest access to your users in a proper way. So no get the portals, they just need to die. Um, you can use it for wire as well, We've not really seen much uh, integration with that, but it's possible. And you can also uh, offer it at your home. So when you have your friends over, which they all have space net accounts, they can just use the space net account to get to where you, to get to where your Wi-Fi. I'm offering this as well at my place and at my parents' place, and uh, well, I guess uh, some other guys are doing this as well. They're just popping up uh, all access points with space net on it mm. tomorrow. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Depends on skip. <laughs> Lol. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Where is he? The word is skip. He's Maybe you should, should, should talk to this voicemail again. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, how does this all work? So, um, let's just say we're now at random data, which, is, which has you know, a, a local radio server and it has an access point. And then we have, well, the cloud and, uh, with uh, country nodes. And then you have your home radio server because you're, uh, you, well, you're a guest at random data and uh, you would like to uh, get to the network with your, well, BitLab credentials. So what would then happen is then uh, the client would, send, would initially send his anonymous identity to the local radio server. So it can be just, just anything uh, at uh, the realm which you, you want to authenticate uh, against. Um, this local radio server would then decide, hey, hey, I cannot um, authenticate this user. I would have to route it back to the country node. Um, the country node uh, has uh, all kinds of 
delegations configured for all the realms he, uh, he knows. So he, the country now then knows he has to uh, route it back to your home radio server, in this case BitLayer's uh, radio server. Um, in the second phase, uh, the authentication would uh, be uh, uh, Authentication tunnel would be directly uh, put up from the local radio server at the hackerspace to your home radio server. So uh, you're, not, you're not actually uh, giving the credentials to the local radio server at that, uh, at that space. You're giving it via a tunnel to your home radio server. So, um, yes. Proxying, proxying based on your anonymous entity, your uh, an, an TLS uh, tunnel is created to your home uh, radio server. The home radio server would say uh, it's it's okay or it's not okay, and then um, there would be the a dynamic key would be uh, discussed with with local access point. Um, and then, well, uh, profit, I guess. So this is another. This is the, yeah, well, this is a bit too much detail, but. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, it's clear. Yes. Uh, in this image, it says, um, well, it has one radio server, but you would have, in some case, you would have. Uh, if the request would need to be to be proxied, then you will have another radio server with, uh, here, and this radio server would only be proxying all of the requests to the correct radio server. Um, but what, what, you see, what you see here is that a client would associate to the Wi-Fi network. Then uh, the the each session would be uh, uh, created here. Then there is some uh, TLS stuff going on with. Uh, Exchange of the, of the radio certificate, and then here you would have here you have uh, the image chat v2, which is used in here. This is for an image for uh, P, which is then uh, which is done <coughs> through the TLS tunnel that has been set up, and, it, and eventually it gets again to the access point, and the client would then um, uh, install the um, uh, actual session key, which is used for the WPA2. Uh, yes, uh, security issues with uh, with this. Um, so, who do I have to trust? Is the, is SpaceNet completely secure? Uh, no, no, it's not. It's not. Um, you know, there's no real end-to-end uh, -end security uh, with SpaceNet, uh, but over the air, your data will be secured because of the dynamic keys that's in, which are used for in WPA2. Uh, there are still issues where you uh, would have uh, possibilities for layer 2 attacks like ARP spoofing, rogue DHP, rogue IPv6, router announcement, that kind of stuff. That is still there, so you still uh, you would need to protect your network against that or you would, uh, as a client, would need, you would need to detect that uh, if that kind of uh, attacks are going on. Uh, yes, very important is the certificate checking. So if you would, as a client, would not uh, check the certificate, then, well, anybody can just put up a SpaceNet network, and then your client will go, will happily associate to that network, and then you, you're, well, you basically do not know if you're connecting to a legitimate network or not. And setting your password. Yeah, but it's the same for a website. Yeah. If yeah. you accept the just accept the certificate, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah well, it's just, it's just the, cell, the same as for for for, for SSL, right? Yeah. So, but in uh, in this case, uh, it works a bit differently. So, as a, as a client, you would need to um, uh, see if uh, or, or need to check if it's a specific certificate, or you would need to check if it's signed by a certain CA and it has a certain common name. Um, so, are you signed by a trusted CA? What? Are all your radius certificates signed by a trusted CA? Uh, well, in case of BitLayer it is, but it's on the hackerspace to arrange the certificate. 
for that. So um, you can we would check. You can also check for specific certificates. Yeah, you can also check for specific certificates. So if you just uh, would uh, install a cell, if you would have a self signed certificate on the radio server, it's not a very big deal because if you would distribute the um, uh, certificate to your clients and they would install it on their device and they would check again that certificate, then it's uh, then it's fine. But it's not but something it that US SpaceNet uh, require of all participating radio servers. Uh, no, no, no. We are. That is that is uh, up to the hackerspace. We are only proxying all of the requests. We are not actually doing anything. Uh, we don't look at your passwords. We just proxy it. Um, yeah. That's what we do. So um, yeah, we'll do, do some do. inspection. Yeah, do some inspection on the well, password. We can. I know. <laughs> Three. Can you have a password? Yeah. 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 Um, it would also be a good uh, idea to check the uh, server's name. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that if you have. Um, uh, you can. Uh, it depends on the on the client, but in most cases you can. Right. In most cases, you can uh, make uh, check the uh, certain domain name and see if the uh, certificate is signed by a certain certificate authority. That's what you what you can do. So, um, but in other cases, you would you could also say I just want to check this specific certificate and nothing else. <coughs> it can be a bit of a hassle when your certificate would expire and you would need to have uh, install another certificate. So, um, about. Identity, um, the, the access point which you're connecting to, it uh, can only um, see the, uh, your anonymous identity because it cannot actually look into the, the, the TLS tunnel. So um, yeah, we can you can do some you know, cool stuff with that. Like uh, so we've seen, seen here, if we're oh, I mean, if we're logging into this uh, access point, which is here, uh, we already have some guy. Uh, Trying to inject uh, some code into uh, into their anonymous identity. I guess it's not really. It should be nice to have an access pop-up now. That <laughs> uh, would be cool. Uh, we also have uh, a, 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 well, we'll call here on the network, but it's nice. actually a bit, but it's actually my laptop, so. <laughs> so that's some cool. Your laptop to serve porn? Yeah. No. Uh, my so my in laptop then, actually is AK47. Yeah. <laughs> And this this works because in, in in the initial request you would just send your uh, outer your anonymous identity so something at the realm and then uh, in the second phase when the TLS tunnel is built up then you would send your uh, actual uh, username and password or well password that would depend on what kind of uh, authentication you're actually you're using so. Um, yeah, is it the next the next best thing to VPNs? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, if you're uh, if you're comparing this to a completely unsecured uh, network, then uh, with SpaceNet you at least have uh, make sure that your uh, yeah, data is encrypted over the air. So it is a good alternative to VPNs because not even not everybody has uh, access to VPNs, but you still need to uh, watch out for those uh, late with it. Um, yeah, some issues uh, with 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 all all this is that most uh, equipment does not have any proper layer two protection mechanism, um, like uh, our protection and the species looping, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we've uh, we've been investigating this in uh, in at BitLayer with our own access access point, which is a, a Linux based access point. And we ran into an issue that we uh, discovered that there is no uh, no layer two filtering possible in if you're using Linux 802.11 uh, drivers. Then you, you can only say, oh, I want to completely isolate the users or uh, allow all of the traffic to use you. You can have actually route it to another interface. All of the packet forwarding is done inside of the uh, the drivers. So and a lot of vendors are using these drivers in their products, so that's a, that's a big issue. Um, and, and user isolation is not the only way out because uh, yeah, you would break end-to-end -end connectivity. Be, uh, clients would not be able to communicate with each other on the same network. So you would really like to have that kind of functionality. Uh, another issue is that um, if you 
running Windows, then this uh, Windows does not really like self-signed certificates. You would need to have uh, a certificate signed by uh, a certificate authority to actually check it. But I had some discussion earlier with Wilco, and he said it might be possible to do, do it as well. But um, yeah, last point on this. Um, should we uh, have, yeah, assign penalties for, for uh, space net networks which, um, which would do admin abuse, like uh, uh, do man in the middle attacks on the network because they, uh, they have uh, access to the router where all the traffic goes to? Yeah, should we do that or not? That's still something we're. Uh, we're looking into if we if we would need to do that or not. We, uh, if we we need to have a mechanism where people can report this kind of abuse. Um, yes, MS Chop V2 vulnerability. This was announced at um, DEFCON this year. Um, yes, MS Chop V2 has been broken <laughs> has been broken for years. This is uh, and it's uh, yeah. Well, the attack showed that you can, uh, within a very short amount of time, you can uh, time you can um, reverse this. Um, the reason it, it, it is not broken for uh, this uh, WPA2 enterprise setup is that um, the MSW2 is used inside of the, the EPTLS tunnel. So only if you can look inside the EPTLS tunnel, then you would have an issue. Yeah. It's not broken as long as the client checks the certificate. If the client does not check the certificate, it's broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that as well, that as well. But uh, you can also, in the TLS tunnel, you can also, be, also, as an alternative, you can use POP, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's, that's the only alternative there is for MS Chop 2 or you would have to uh, have an approach where you... Uh, Distribute certificates. Hmm? Yeah, you would have to authenticate with certificates. So, we are kind of running out of time here, so um, <laughs> we're running through this. So, um, what would I need to connect to get uh, SpaceNet at my hackerspace? You would need an access point to WPA2 enterprise support. You would need to, to have some kind of uh, machine uh, which can run uh, radius. We can provide you the free radius config, which is on our wiki. Um, it's very you, easy to install. Yeah. Just copy paste and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah well, you would need to have some kind of user directory, so uh, preferably LLAP and maybe uh, a public key infrastructure if you would like to authenticate with certificates. Uh, you would need uh, some kind of uh, fixed IP so we can uh, so we can hook it up to our uh, top nodes. Um, IPv6 would be very good. Very good thing to use in the, this kind of, uh, but uh, if you have a fixed IP4, it's no problem for it as well. Uh, then you would need a, a token where, which is supplied by your uh, country node, and you would need to have some clue to set it up. And you can ask us, uh, yeah, to ask Skip. Ask Skip, yes. That's yeah. <laughs> a good thing. Yeah. So, um, so we're using it right now. Right now we have BitLayer, RefSpace, Frag, XSpace. New space, Cintegrate, which is in Luxembourg, uh, random data, and um, subplot.org in Germany, and more. Um, we already done some events with SpaceNet, uh, like ETH0, uh, EMF Camp, which was last weekend in England, uh, Hexagreen in Luxembourg, uh, Hack in the Box Amsterdam, and uh, Hack in the Box Malaysia, we'll have it as well. Um, so are you using, using it right now? You can use these credentials to get to uh, SpaceNet. Um, and we would need to publish the certificate as well. But <laughs> we, would. we would, we would, we would need to. Um, so, um, future SpaceNet, we're uh, currently upgrading our uh, anel node and our uh, default node. Um, this is all well, somewhat sponsored by uh, NICAF. We, are, uh, we would have two machines and two different networks for our NL and default node. And uh, another server we would, need, we would have for uh, some monitoring and management kind of stuff. So, uh, 
yeah, more promotion, more events, more spaces. We would like to have more supported radio servers and platform. We all, we we had some requests in uh, uh, before that we would have to, uh, we, if we could have an uh, integration with Microsoft uh, Active Directory and that kind of stuff. That would also be possible if you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Radio and AE. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we would like to have some easier deployment if we, we have some experience that, that some hackerspaces do not have in, uh, yeah, enough background to actually set up LDAP and set up the radius part. So uh, we're, we're looking into ways to simplify this process, but on the other hand it can be very uh, can be an educational process for the, the hackerspace. Um, so we're planning to also monitoring and uh, we're developing some ma management software to. Uh, uh, we have only have five seconds left for uh, for Q and A. Uh, any opening? Yeah. Any opening? Huh? Any opening? Yes, 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 yes. We would like to uh, also announce that uh, random data is also connected to SpaceNet. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's create some tweets for that. <laughs> In the couple of seconds we have. And. Um, Yes, so uh, random data is also connected to space now. Yeah. 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 Uh, so three minutes Q&A. Three minutes Q&A, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, how about requirements for uh, people that connect to the uh, access points, like, uh, or like what you said, uh, said uh, check the certificate, yeah. but also check the uh, server name, which would also be uh, uh, another level of security for uh, 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 the uh, MS job uh, uh, problem. Yeah. Um, are you gonna enforce such a policy, or mm, we can really not? So it's up to the client to uh, if they would check the certificate or not. So uh, if you are not as a client, not, you're not if you're not checking the certificate, then mm -hmm. you're it, it, it just uh, it's, it's, yeah, your it, it's, it's your risk. It is also has been shown for for in in Adorome, uh, deployment that a lot of clients uh, and especially the Windows clients they are mm -hmm. not uh, checking the certificate and man in the middles can be done uh, yeah. very easily so it's yep. uh, <coughs> well, very uh, like, and like, very crucial. Yeah. How about providing a, a, a sample uh, uh, with the supplicant configuration file, which has like uh, uh, some things uh, uh, pre-configured, yeah. like, like that server name. Yeah. Because if yeah, you set up a rogue access point uh, uh, with a fake radius server, yeah. and the server name is not uh, 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 is checked by the client and it, it's not compared, yeah. uh, or it's, it's not similar, it doesn't send the credentials, so it's another layer of security for uh, uh, those rogue access points. So, so perhaps you could eliminate that problem by such a, a, a solution. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, the only problem still is that uh, yeah, the client also is like always, always using the local radio server. So uh, from sp from SpaceNet's perspective, we cannot really uh, yeah. no, we can we, we 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 can't do that. So that's true. Also, mobile devices would not accept like a, a configuration file like that. Um, yeah, that, that's that's also an issue. But if you're uh, for for example, if you're on the iOS uh, platform for the, uh, on the iPhones and on the yeah. iPads. Uh, it would, if the, if you're initially joining a network, it would send you a certificate. You, you uh, at that time accept that certificate. If the certificate would change in time, then it will uh, give you uh, give the user an error that you, you cannot connect to this network because the certificate has changed. Yep. Uh, out of the box, that works pretty pretty well, but it's uh, very client dependent on how to uh, yep. uh, yeah uh, do this. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe if you <laughs> make the the, uh, the people that connect to your network aware of the fact <laughs> that it's <laughs> broken, yeah, you could eliminate the problem a little bit more. And let's discuss yeah. it during dinner because yeah. we're out of time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.